looking for some ideas to spark your next project then I have five for you here to get you started and let's just kick off with a colour challenge because we love colour challenges don't we? So how about making some abstract art just using red, yellow and blue? Limiting your colour palette is a great way to get you started. We often find that it's just hard to get started don't we and doing something that limits your choice can really help to stop that overthinking that can stop us. And when you pick a palette like primaries you don't even have to work out which colours to pick for your limited colour palette because they've already been picked, they're already there. So just grab a red, yellow and blue mark making tool or some paint and just get going. And for mine I've gone with some scribbling with my watercolour crayons and it's just a fast way to get some colour down, do some really fearless abstract art. But you can use this idea with any material that you might have. Play around with how you use your materials. If they're water soluble then use them with both water and dry. Try dripping them, dribble them, scribble with them, paint them. Keep it loose and fun and don't worry about the end result. Just add colour and see what other colours start to emerge too from mixing those colours. I can see hints of greens and oranges and even purples sort of showing up on this piece as I add each of the different colours in turn. It's only small on this one because I wasn't really focusing on colour mixing but you can make it a bigger thing and make colour mixing of your primaries like a key element to your piece. Or then just keep it simple like I'm doing and let the primaries themselves be the main part of the show. So for this abstract I've run the colours over wet and dry areas. I've also let the colours drip and spread into each other. Then there are things like I've scribbled through wet and dry colour with both a dry crayon and then one that I've dipped into water first. So there's lots of different ways that you can use up your tools, change them about just with these three colours to get some really quick scribbly abstracts. Then don't just make one piece, make a few of them, see what other pieces you can make. And you can work out which ones you like the best, which kind of techniques you enjoyed the best, or you could just do a whole art series of primaries. Okay, so for the next idea, let's go into some collage and some abstract collage. So, but not just abstract collage, let's have a look at word art. So here's an idea to get you started. Pick out some painted papers, just leftover bits of papers that you've got from other projects and start adding random words to them. Don't overthink it, write a word on your coloured paper and you could do it to a theme. I'm actually doing it loosely to the theme of art but any kind of theme is going to work with this. So if there's something that's really exciting you at the moment, maybe book titles or flowers or birds or what about yummy foods, anything that you're, that's making you happy at the moment. Use those to inspire what words you write on your coloured paper. And also try using different pens and different lettering styles, really change it up and you can use different colours too. Try and make it as random as varied as you can. And you can make each word different and then cut the words out in random shapes. So do a few of these so you have a lot to choose from when you come to do the collage bit. If you want to have a quick play with the words on your paper, try out some different combinations and if any that you know really appeal to you then get a photo of them before you move on to the next one. And then when it comes time to stick things down you can either go with one of the combinations that you photoed or like I'm doing just go for a random, go for a random collection of collage words. Grab a word, glue it down and don't overthink it. And I'd really encourage you to give that a go at least once and it's particularly useful if you're trying to free up your art at the moment or you're actively working towards getting comfortable with being more loose with your work. So remember it's not about outcomes, it's really all about doing. Now if you know that your pens won't run then glue them fully to the paper with layers of medium or gel. 
if you think your pens will run, then just glue the back of the word and stick that in place. Then once you have your collage, you can even add a few doodles to it as well. Of course, collage doesn't have to be about words. You could use other elements too. And if you wanted some new elements to play with, I make monthly art packs for my $5 and above patrons to inspire and use in your art. So they don't have to just be for abstracts. I actually share a project every month as well using the pack myself just as a starting off point to get you thinking. So if you are looking to get more creating done at the moment I do have a link to my Patreon at the top of my description. Right, so another great idea to get us making abstracts is to use geometric shapes. And you often see me use circles, it's one of those things that I really love to use. But of course other shapes are available and make amazing abstract subjects too. So let's have a look at some other shapes and other ideas that we can use. And there's lots and lots and lots of ways you can do this, but I'm going to start this one off with a bit of colour and build up the shape that I'm playing with. And you can make it as simple or as complex as you want it to be. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not really sure what shape I want, and you're looking for some more shape ideas, then, well, look at the object that's right in front of you right now. What's the overall shape of that object? So I'm guessing that you're looking at your phone or your tablet or computer screen right now, and that shape is mostly like a rectangle, isn't it? What can you do with a rectangle? Well, there's all sorts of things you could do, couldn't you? You could try rounding the corners, you could sharpen the corners, you could taper one end of the rectangle, you could add in rounded lines or straighten the lines. Already there's lots of different things you can do just with that simple shape. Play with the shape and see what other shapes you can make from it. Combine them, group them together, connect them together. It's kind of fun to transform the shapes you see all around you all the time into your own unique shape. It's a great way of getting and sparking new ideas. So keep that overall shape in mind and maybe sketch it out on a spare piece of paper first, then have a play with making some abstract art with it. So for mine I've been adding some colour to blot the silhouette out of my shape. And I'm using watercolours and letting them merge and move into each other and then adding a bit of texture with some salt as well. Then once this is all dry and I've brushed off that salt, I can come back in and use a pen over the top to add some more details to my unique geometric shape. It's a super doodle and can be any type of geometric inspired shape that you like. So yeah, have a go. Take some inspiration from the shapes that are around you right at this moment or maybe you want to use your favourite shapes like circles, stars, hearts and make a few different abstract pieces using those shapes in different ways. There are lots of different ways that you can go geometric with your abstract art, so explore and experiment, have fun with it. Right, so let's move on to the next idea, and I can't have a list of abstract art ideas without mentioning minis. Minis are such a great way to get into abstract art and you can use them as warm-ups for a longer art session, you can use them as test runs and idea generators for bigger pieces. They just are so flexible and so easy to use. They're also great for things like trying out different colour combinations, different mark making ideas or different shapes. So if you want to try out some of your geometric shapes, these are great places to try them out on. So yeah, they are just a really great tool. So if you haven't already, it's time to explore the power of the mini. And I often make these in batches, so you've heard me talk about this before. I also try to do it quite regularly as an exercise and change them up each time that I do it. They are really simple ways to ease yourself into your art. And if you find it hard to not overthink things, they're really good. Or if you don't have time for a bigger piece as well, they're great for that too. And being a smaller piece, they force you to be more focused and focused on what's important. 
so often a, a whole page or a larger piece can feel open and wild with like just so many possibilities so making your piece smaller can cut through the noise and just as with those primaries it limits your choices and, and lets you just make the art instead of thinking about the art and trying to make too many decisions you can also use them to get more familiar with the art materials that you're using and to learn new ways to combine them and use them or maybe you've bought a new color and you want to see how it works with the other colors that you currently have so don't be afraid to use minis to make mini abstract watercolors mini abstract acrylics like i'm doing here or any other art materials and combination of art materials that you want to try out so yay the mini and the one that I've been demoing here, I've really been playing with the shapes and compositions for this one. And it just needs a little bit of clever colour usage, some simple mark making, and you have a little artwork piece. Do a few of them, and if you do them all the same size, you can collect them together and make them into a book. Or you could make them as individual pieces of wall art or collections of wall art. Or you could even turn them into cards like I did with this one. Okay, time for a different idea to get you abstracting and this one is all about masks but I'm also going to show you a kind of fake mask technique as well. So I'm using sprays and this is an acrylic paint spray but you can also use your dye sprays, airbrushing or any type of spray paints you might have. I'm also going to use some pigment powders too but you can swap them out for any kind of water reactive coloring material that you have so even acrylic paint or watercolor will do there's just so many ways to make masks and so many ways to use them so have a play and don't feel that you can't do it if you don't have the materials that I'm using in this demo just try what you've got and I'm actually going to make my masks from just ordinary paper so the simplest of masks that you can make and they're just really effective too the only thing is they're not very resilient under too much liquid so when I spray over them I try to not soak them too much but you can see instant abstract <laughs> and if you wanted to you can add more color over the top with the powdered pigment sprinkled into the wet paint or try adding lines of water over the piece then sprinkling the powder pigment into the water or if you're using paint instead just drop some paint into that water and let it spread and merge and you can use these paper masks with paint as well so that's not a problem all you need to do is hold them in the middle use something like an acrylic paint so something that you don't have to dilute it too much with water then move your paintbrush over the mask edge from the inside of the shape to the outside so just going in that one direction and the masks work perfectly well like that just trying to limit how much paint you get underneath the mask so play around with different combinations different shapes different colors and see what kind of abstracts you can make and for a bonus let's just add some water to a page and i'm just adding these in circles and lines but not filling the whole page then just carefully drop in some color to the water So I'm using my powdered paint but obviously you can use any kind of water reactive paint that you might have so watercolors or dyes or even watered down acrylic paint for this one and you can see that the color just starts moving through your water and by the time it's sort of moved through and dried you get quite a complex and interesting looking piece that looks like you might have used a mask or a stencil to make that design so I hope you have fun with all of those abstract art ideas and they sort of get you working, get you playing. If you're looking for some more mixed media art ideas, then watch these videos next. Meanwhile, look after yourself and thank you for watching. I will catch up with you again for some more art soon.